Honorable Kumar Amat, Honorable Ajay Chandraka, Dr. Arun Panda, Dr. Kumar Maheda, Professor Das, Professor Tripathi, and my good friend, Professor Jaina. And dear colleagues and distinguished clinicians, scientists, patient advocates, patients and families, those representing industry, and all those who share a passion for sickle cell disease who are gathered here for the third Global Congress on sickle cell disease. We first gathered in 2010 in Accra, Ghana. We then went to Brazil, Rio, Brazil in 2014. And it's only fitting that we come to India, given that India is in the top three of countries with a high burden of sickle cell disease. There have been progress made in diagnosing and treating this disease. But as yet, what we know already is not universally working for people who are born with sickle cell disease. Every day, by the end of this day, over a thousand babies with sickle cell disease will be born. Out of those, less than 50 will be detected by the age of two months. The majority of those will be undetected, and they may die undetected. So I think even our estimates probably are underestimating the magnitude of the problem. Though we know there are solutions, we must find ways in which those solutions can work. And a lot have been said, but I want to say just two things. We need innovation. We need innovation to take what we know and use modern technology, combine with it, and find solutions that work. And not only work, but that they are sustainable and scalable. We ought to be able to find solutions that can be implemented, not only in one state, but universally to scale. And those solutions mean we have to modify the way we treat this disease in the richer countries of the world. So the challenge for us is to find those innovative uh, solutions. The second thing I want to say is that if there is any disease that epitomizes the social determinants of health, sickle cell disease is one. Here in India, we are learning that many of the people who suffer from this disease are in remote areas, are poor, are marginalized, and are unreached. And therefore, we have to understand the social context in which we deal with this disease. And we have to understand that we are not treating a disease, but we are treating a people who have aspirations, who have the dignity of life. And we have to take their cultural and socioeconomic situation into consideration. I see real hope for sickle cell disease, whereas in the past, very few industries were involved in drug development. We have suddenly seen a foray of industry development of new drugs for sickle cell disease. But if we don't change the way we do so, we'll have more possible solutions, but very few people will be able to access them. So in this Congress, we are having a symposium on hydroxyurea uh, as, a, as a, a disease-modifying therapy and how to improve access to hydroxyurea around the world. We are also having another symposium on point-of-care diagnosis looking at technologies that are affordable and sustainable. But let me leave with one message. Under the Millennium Development Goal, there were two major health initiatives to reduce maternal mortality by uh, three quarters and to reduce under five mortality by two thirds. The Millennium Development Goals came to an end in 2015. Now it's been replaced by the Sustainable Des Development Goals and out of 17 goals, only one is related to health. And under health, the emphasis is going to be on non communicable diseases. My fear is that if we don't double our efforts, cancer, diabetes, asthma, road traffic accidents, cardiovascular disease will swamp sickle cell disease or thalassemia, that the voice of genetic disorders might be further swamped and not heard. So I challenge you all as advocates, providers, 
researchers, government policy makers, industry. Let us raise our voice now, and it is time for partnership so that our voice can be heard, that hemoglobinopathies, including sickle cell disease, will be considered a significant non-communicable disease requiring attention. And we hope that at the end of the Congress, we'll be able to present some white paper that I believe policymakers can work on. But let it not be a white paper, but one that is translated into action. So thank you all for coming, and we look forward to a great Congress.